In this segment, we're going to uh, address a few uh, few issues that customers have been having questions about, namely removing the resettable hand wheel, both on the standard uh, uh, X and Y and the X on the, uh, the lathe and the Z on the mill. The Z is the only one that's a little bit different because it has an extra screw. And then we'll also get into a little bit of adjustment uh, when you're setting your backlashes and that you want to make sure the hand wheel backlash is set first. And so, for sake of demonstration, I'm using a 5400 milling machine in the horizontal conversion uh, configuration. It really doesn't matter uh, the machine because the hand wheels are pretty much all the same. Uh, the first one we're going to do is the, the standard uh, uh, X hand wheel with the resettable uh, dial on it. The easiest way to get it off is you want to first release the thumb lock so you can rotate the hand wheel. Now hold the silver dial and turn the hand wheel until you see the little hole in the hand wheel or in the, uh, the dial. Now hold the number dial and turn the hand wheel until you see the set screw through the hole. It's real easy because it turns from silver to black. And take your 332nd Allen wrench. Sure it's seated well into the set screw and loosen it. Do not try to take it completely out. The set screw will not come out through the hole in the number dial. We kind of did that on purpose so you don't lose the set screw. Um, maybe a turn, a uh, turn and a half, and the hand wheel comes right off. Simple as that. And now the Z on the milling machine is slightly different in that it does have the set screw on the side, but it also has a little captive screw on top. So to do this, you, do, you start off the same way, loosen the thumb wheel, find your, find your hole in the, in the number dial, hold the number dial, and turn the silver hand wheel until you see the set screw through the hole. Put your Allen wrench in, loosen it up, maybe a turn, and now the difference is, is there's a little flathead screw on top. Now you can't take this out because it's held captive in by the, the, the locking thumb wheel. With a real small Allen wrench, loosen it. And then as you're taking it out, lift up on the hand wheel and off she comes. That simple. Now remember, don't lose your, your thrust bearing and thrust washer. Make sure that gets put back on. And assembly is reverse. Do your little screw on top, snug it down. Tighten the set screw on the side. And then positively lock down a little screw on top. And and wheel is back on. Next, we'll, we'll address backlash on the hand wheel. The last thing we're going to address is the hand wheel backlash. A number of customers have complained that they have almost a turn, if not a turn plus, of backlash before anything starts happening. What you can see here is the gap here between the thrust collar and the number dial is actually increasing and decreasing as I'm turning it, it eventually will start moving the axis, but you get this almost a half a turn backlash. And what's happened is, is over time with aggressive machining, the hand wheel can pull away from the shoulder a little bit. And the, the easiest way to uh, address that is just like taking off the hand wheel. You want to find your, your hole in the, in the number dial and then your set screw. Loosen the set screw. Here you just have to loosen it a little bit. And then what you want to do is you want to push the axis forward so the shoulder of the lead screw is against the collar and then push the hand wheel on. You may need an extra hand to do this. And then just tighten it back down. And make sure it's nice and secure. And the backlash in the hand wheel is now gone. And that addresses that problem. That's all for this video. Happy machining.